So at the beginning, the chapel sort of looked like any chapel you go into. There was nothing much besides the original stained glass. There wasn't uh, very many distinct aspects of it. But now you have, you know, chairs, and I believe they only have three rows of pews. So before it was like it felt like a very familiar chapel, like like you would experience anywhere else. But now it's it's totally something new where you just you, you couldn't experience that same thing in any other chapel. I feel like how professional is this? Is this for class? No. Okay, we're good then. Um, it's not the greatest. I don't love it. Jesus is the greatest. Oh, you know. <laughs> It's not my favorite thing in the world. It's not obscene, I guess. Not too sure about how much money was spent on it, but I realize it's a donation. I think it was unnecessary. I like the old Calvary Chapel more. I would have even said, spend a little bit of money to maybe make it the same. <laughs> Initially, I really disliked it uh, because I really like the old Calvary Chapel building. I just don't like it because I miss old Calvary and I just came back after a year, you know, of not being at school and now I miss, I miss what I used to have. It just felt kind of, kind of cozy and nice and kind of uh, plain, which was pleasant. And the new one feels a little more like an art gallery. It was more like a modern art gallery than like a chapel setting. Not sure how I feel about the stained glass windows just yet. The stained glass is a little bit unnerving. It doesn't necessarily make people feel comfortable. Just because of the style, it kind of is a little eerie. It doesn't feel too abstract, but it feels abstract enough to feel uncomfortable when, you're, when you first see it. I kind of supposed to be like Bible stories. I don't know which like stories they are though, because just it's just really confusing to me. So I think there's a distinction between um, art that that takes effort and art that is slightly incomprehensible. I've been going to the Tuesday uh, midday prayer and they've been explaining kind of some of the artwork and I'm beginning to see like, okay, well, it, it seems very intentional and I like that. As you really got to like kind of sit and stare at them for a while, like you really got to appreciate the stories. I like the stained glass windows because it really helps to like help people like have reflection almost like an existential experience for um, when they go and worship and when they hear speakers. I think the stained glass is pretty cool. Tells a nice story. Um, there's probably a little bit too much focus on the art, <laughs> but that's okay. It's good. I've always thought of stained glass as like we as Christians, because like before it's just like regular glass with no color to, towards it. And then it's like broken down and like we as Christians over our like life we were broken down, and then like he adds color to us, it puts us back together and turns us into something beautiful, so I think it like represents that. Yeah. So I actually got to see um, a lot of the interpretations of the stories uh, in the art gallery. I learned to appreciate them a lot more once I, I got to learn their stories uh, in the art gallery, but I felt like there was a couple that you could naturally just tell sort of the story that they're based on. So it's something hard to understand, it requires something of you. But I think with abstract art, you kind of lose clarity. You know, if you need something to explain it, then I think that's going to lose its, it's going to lose power. I think it's mainly for the art majors. Uh, from the media, it seems like they have a deeper appreciation for it. And then art in the Christian context is not as appreciated. Uh, it's like, it's super aesthetically pleasing. I think so. I think it's just beautiful. For me, uh, it's beautiful. It's something new. Uh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to it, and I'm for them. And after all, uh, God is an artist, and he gives us the ability to create art. Yeah. And we should all appreciate it. Uh, I really like the stained windows. I just think maybe I'm pushing back a little bit because uh, I'm, a, I'm a pew guy, and now that there's no longer pews, it kind of doesn't feel like the same. Interior seating is less than ideal, but I'll admit I was more impressed after I went in the chapel and saw it in the inside. I think pews emphasize the unity um, of the of the congregation. Granted, the, these chairs are linked together, but at the same time, I think aesthetically speaking, um, it looks. I think it's more pleasing to have rows of pews rather than a bunch of individual chairs to sort of there. I don't like the lack of pews. I think the pews should be back in the chapel. 
The chairs are really uncomfortable. The seats aren't comfortable. They got rid of the TVs on the corners, so you go in there for fives and you don't even know what's going on. I think that the exterior is less than ideal. Especially, oh man, I mean, you also painted the blue on the outside. Why'd you have to, like, that's like the last semblance of old Calvary and you just got rid of it, you know, for no reason. I've heard of many people say that the outside of it is looks pretty awful. The colors are awful. I don't think the color scheme that they went with was the right choice for that particular building. It doesn't match the colors of the rest of the school. Yeah, I just don't think it fits on this campus, really. The golden wall is pretty cool. I don't like the golden cross, though, outside. I don't like the golden cross, and I don't like the golden background. I get, like, the meaning behind it. I get how it's, like, all oh, God is, like, God is supposed to, like, this glorious to, like, the gold and all that. That I do like, and I'm glad that the artists were saying that it's to depict uh, heaven. I do like the gold wall. It feels very holy. The gold wall is massive. <laughs> totally daunting and overwhelming when you walk in. You see it. Uh, you're kind of just taken into this, this idea of just awe. I know of a church that has kind of like a, a raised section above the pulpit at the top of sort of like this almost tower with windows at the top. In the daytime, the light shines in. The problem with the chapel right now is that the wall at the front um, blocks the windows that are there on the outside but do not now, now they don't bring light into the chapel. Rather than something at the front um, where, you know, you have, like, say, someone preaching or whatever, um, light coming in, now, now you have the wall receiving light. This is a very Protestant notion, I guess. <laughs> um, we're not focused so much on the place itself, but rather the, the worshiping of God. Um, I can definitely see how icons and how art helps that along. I don't like the um, kind of the flashiness of the whole thing. I like churches that are a little more like, uh, this is a place to gather for all of God's people and we'll worship him here together and it's wherever. I think that a lot of people are really dramatic by, uh, about it. In like 10 years when that stuff dies down and everybody stops caring about the art, I think it'll be pretty cool. <laughs> Yoda, you seek Yoda, hmm? Yes? Yes, I can, hmm? <laughs> but we can also do... Golden, golden, or Smeagol. Is it the one precious? Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs>